Hi there, I'm Angela. Welcome to the channel or welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little out of the ordinary for this channel. I'm going to be taking this mess of old ties that I came into possession of and repurposing at least one of them for today into something a little more useful. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned. Hey all! Recently I came into possession of several old neckties. My husband was cleaning out his closet and he hasn't worn neckties to his job in many, many years. And since the pandemic, since the start of the pandemic, he's really like pretty much 100% work remotely. So he never wears ties except for an occasion where we would go to a more formal wedding or something like that. So he held a few back that he really, really liked and that goes with his suits. Uh, the rest of them he was just going to trash. And I thought, why don't we just donate these? And then I thought, you know, I think I remember something about you can turn old neckties into bias binding. So I ran them through the washer and hoping that that would be okay since some of them probably are silk. They did fine in the washer. And I'm going to share with you today my process for making bias binding out of one of these old neckties. Never done this before. I did find a good set of instructions on a website. It's from the Threads Magazine website. I'll be sure and link that blog. It was the blog post they had or an article. Either way, I'll link it below in case you wanna to refer to that and see the pictures that they shared and all the detailed steps. So just going by what I remember from reading that article, I am going to go ahead and work on one of these ties and show you guys how I'm doing this and we'll hope that we get some good bias binding out of it. So I have all the ties that he gave me kind of laid out here. I'm just going to pick one today and work on it and maybe I'll pick the one that I like the least or that I would be the least likely to use to start with. So that way I can learn on the one that I really don't like that much. So here's this one here, and it looks like it's got some stains or something on it. And frankly, this was never one of my favorite of his ties anyway. So I'm going to pick that one out. So let's pull that one aside. And all these other ones. So I have the tie that I'm working on laid out here. And I remember that the first thing you do is to take off any labels or tags. So I do have the label here and I like a little I, the loop I guess that the, the back portion of the tie tucks into so I'm going to use my seam ripper and unpick these stitches and then I guess this little loop has to come off too So that was pretty simple. It's still attached right here, but I think that it'll come off of this little center seam when I do my next step, which is to unpick the stitches where it's kind of wrapped around and folded like down the center back of the tie. And I believe I read that it was either on the threads article or another article when I was looking up more about using neckties that oftentimes this center seam here is hand stitched. So I found that to be interesting. Looking at it, I, I'm pretty sure that must be true because this definitely looks like a hand stitched stitching. All right, the little loop just came off. It was caught up in the hand stitching. So this part's going pretty easy and quick, not even really having to use the seam ripper. The thread's just coming right out. And it's kind of interesting if you've never seen, like me, never seen the inside of a necktie, just to see what we can find in here. Go ahead and just break that. couple of reasons why we would even want to use a necktie as bias binding is because oftentimes they're made out of nicer fabric such as silk 
so it's kind of like a little like a luxury like a little secret luxury you can have on the inside of your garment to have this luxurious silk uh, binding around your edges so that's kind of fun and of course you know the crazy patterns could add a little bit of fun to the inside of your garment and then i guess the main reason we would use the necktie is because in general from what i've read they are cut on the bias so it works out really well yeah this is really old one it's got i don't know if you guys can see that red on there I'm pretty sure that was that's a stain and not not the original color of the tie and knowing that uh, because it has this stain on it I'm not sure that I would ever want to put this one in my garment just because it's you know it's not real attractive but because of that I may not once I get this one apart and show you guys the next step I may not even go forward with this one just because I don't want to spend any more time using the rotary cutter and the cutting mat, cutting out the strips and stitching them together on something I'm not going to use. But it was a good practice one just to take apart and see what's inside. So inside there is, I guess this is an interfacing, but it's heavy. It's really heavy. It's kind of fuzzy on one side and a little shinier and textury on the other. But that is just coming right out at the bottom, the big piece. And ah, came out at the top too. I thought it was attached up here, but it wasn't. So I don't think I'll need this for anything. Certainly not this project. And then what I've got in here is another little, this little pocket where the interfacing was tucked in, I believe. And another label that talks about the contents. So this is 100% silk, dry clean, says handmade. And I guess I could unpick this label here. I think what I would probably do is just to cut it right there just to save time, which means I'll be losing a couple inches of bias strip there if I did that. But that's okay. Now down here at the big end, I definitely, what I would do to get rid of this pocket here, I'm not going to unpick all those. I think I would just cut like, you know, the perimeter right around the edges and cut that off. But as I mentioned, I, I don't think I will ever put this into a garment. At least I don't think I would. So I'm probably going to, for now, toss that one aside. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out another that I feel like I would actually use a little bit more in a garment and work on that one. So I'm just gonna, I picked out one that I like the pattern of a little better. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same steps on that. And then you guys probably don't care to watch me cut another tie apart. <laughs> Once I get that part done and we'll move on to the next step, I'll be back. So I've got this one almost done. What I found interesting was at both ends, it was, it stopped being hand stitching. And for this last little half inch or so, it's stitched really tight. Like I was able to get it apart down here at the fat end of the tie, but at the skinny end, like without really digging in there with my seam ripper, I'm, I'm having trouble getting this apart. I might give it a little more, a little more try. But if I find that I'm damaging the fabric, though, I'll probably go ahead and just stop. And what I would do then is just to cut this off. I might do that anyway. Just go ahead and cut that off. Yeah, that probably would be simpler. So now I can take the interfacing all the way out so i've got what have i got at the skinny end we're good there that little pocket got cut off and at the wider end i still have this pocket and where the interfacing had been tucked in so what i'm going to do there so i don't have to spend too much time picking out stitches is just to 
cut this little lining out like right as close as I can to the seam edge. That way I'm not wasting any fabric that could be used for bias strips. And I'm also not spending so much time with the tedious task of picking out stitches. And I'm forgetting now like what the instructions on that article said to do at this step. They might have just had you cut it out regardless anyway. All right, my next step is to iron. So I've just got what I have now is just the front, the fabric itself. No interfacing, no lining, just the pure fabric. And I'm going to get this ironed. So that is what we'll do now. So while I was waiting for my iron to warm up, I went ahead and pulled out my cutting mat, got out my ruler and my rotary cutter. I have these things because I am also a quilter, um, but they are gonna be really, really helpful in making this bias binding. I have made bias binding before a number of times just because I am a quilter and had to make my own quilt binding. So this part, like that's why I was comfortable switching to the nicer tie to go ahead and start on this part because I'm not completely unfamiliar with the process. But in case you don't have these tools, what I'm using is just a rotary cutter. This is Ulfa brand. I've used this for so many years. You can replace the blade on it. And this is a six inch by 24 inch ruler. This is the ruler that I use by far more than anything, whether it's garment sewing, quilting, what have you. And then I also have my big uh, self-healing cutting mat here. So we will need those here in just a few minutes. But for now, the next step is to iron. And I forgot that this is um, silk. So I'm changing the setting on my iron. I just, I usually keep it on linen, cotton, or polyester. That's what I sew with most. And while we're waiting for that to cool, I do remember in the article I read with the how-to that you should, like once you get this ironed, you're supposed to make markings down the center of the tie and then with chalk and then draw a line down to help you get a straight line um, just to help maintain the to keep a, a true bias orientation on this I'm feeling pretty comfortable that I'm just going to line it up with my ruler um, but once again I did link that article below in the description so if you guys want to check that out and go more by the exact rules that they provided definitely feel free to do that okay so my iron is still on red or orange I don't know if that light's showing up meaning that it's not at the right temperature but I am not that patient so I'm going to go ahead and get started get this tie ironed and it looks like it's doing fine I don't see any scorching or no apparent like damage to the fabric so that is good oh, and my light just turned green so we were almost there anyway I did turn my steam on, um, even though this tie is probably silk, because whatever garment that this goes into almost assuredly will be going through um, the washing machine. And I'm noticing too where I cut that lining out up here at the, the wide end of the tie. It's not really uh, pressing really well. So I think what I'm going to do is just cut again, going a little bit more into the actual fabric. And it might mean I lose a little bit of finished product, but I don't, I don't think it'll be that much. I'm really more concerned with getting this ironed out flat. And I read that like the standard necktie could yield anywhere from three to five yards of binding. So that's, you know, that's a pretty decent amount. All right, let's see if we can get this ironed out a little better now. I think my iron's probably running low on water, but try to make it through this whole tie before refilling. 
Oftentimes I've considered getting a gravity fed steam iron, but I just don't know how I could arrange it the way that, you know, within the constraints of my sewing room. Not giving up on it, but at least for right now, I'm not sure, you know, how to make that work. All right, so I've got my tie ironed out pretty well. And what I'm going to do now is to fold this ironing pad back to free up my mat here and have space to work. And I'm just going to kind of lay the tie out as straight, you know, squared up to the mat as I can and also keep it as straight this way so it's not, you know, doing that. And of course, the tie is much longer than my mat is. It's hanging like way off the other side of the table over there. It's not a problem, just something to be aware of. I can see now why it might be a good idea to make that chalk line before you start cutting. And I think I'm going to do that. Let me get my chalk pencil out. And I'm kind of just eyeballing this part. Let me scooch you down here. So I've, I've moved the camera down just a little bit so you can see this end here. Maybe the better thing is to move this mat up. So I'm kind of just eyeballing like the point of the tie, but keeping in mind that because I cut around this end where the fat end where the lining was, that this may not be accurate now. I might have skewed it a little bit, but pretty much, you know, looking at the shape of the tie and lining my ruler up down the center, I feel like it's like pretty straightforward. And I also feel like it, if it's off a little way, one way or the other, it's not that big of a deal because it's just binding. Now, when I'm cutting out garment pieces, I definitely get the true, I pay much more attention to making sure the grain line is straight and give a little more concern about those things. But either way, even if the ruler is, you know, off one way or the other, it's still going to be a bias binding, even if it's not exactly, you know, 45 degrees or what have you, it'll be biased enough that it'll go around curves pretty easily, I feel. Those are my thoughts. Random, you might have a differing opinion. I'm not sure if this white pencil is going to show up on here. Goes up a little, not much, and I'm afraid to put too much pressure with the pencil because what I was finding, this fabric is thin and light. It was making the fabric kind of shift under the ruler. So we're going to put the pencil aside and just go for it. After all, it's kind of an experimental fun thing I'm doing here. If it doesn't turn out perfect, it's no loss. It's probably time to change out my blade. I haven't done that in quite a while. Yeah, I'm seeing parts where it didn't quite cut through. All right, but it did pretty good overall. So what I'm going to do now is to scoot the tie down so we have the rest of the length or at least a little more of the length to work with. And I'm going to line my ruler back up with this cut. This is where it probably would be very helpful if you had drawn, like if I had drawn the chalk line down, but I'm okay with it. I think it's going to work out just fine. And I'm just going to cut down this last little section here. Okay, so now I've got two pieces. And what I read was that you typically would cut this into one inch width. And I'm kind of seeing that you really might not be able to do much more than one inch. Or maybe you'd only get one strip because the at the skinniest part, you know, the tie is only so wide. And right there, you get a, a good idea. That might be one and a half. 
something like that. So now we're actually going to work on our first strip now that we've got the length of the tie cut in two. And what I think I might do, so I feel like if I can get uh, wider than one inch, like one and a quarter, I'm going to go for it. It just kind of depends so that I have more to work with and not short myself. I'm finding that because it's a skinny little strip and it's kind of a wiggly fabric that makes it a little more difficult. Like I'm trying to get my fabric, my strip lined up straight on this grid as I can going by the grid lines. That way when I put my ruler down, it's not like waved underneath of it, wavy. This might be the hardest part of the process. So I can do one and a quarter, and I'm going to go ahead and do that because I feel like a little bit extra width is not a bad thing. And I guess that really kind of depends mostly on how it's going to be used. So I've got the beginnings of my first strip here. And I'll just keep going down the whole length, cutting my one and a quarter. So it's feeling like it's a little, maybe a little tedious, but this is the first one. And like with anything, probably like the more of these that I do, it'll get really a lot quicker. And I only have so many, so <laughs> I'm not going out buying neckties just for this purpose. Although you could do that. If you go to your local Goodwill or thrift store, charity shop, and I know that people do do that. Go in and buy the ties for pretty cheap to use expressly for the purpose of making binding with. Nothing wrong with that. And I'm kind of thinking it might be like one of those little quick win projects. Well, quick once you do it a few times and get, get the process down. And then like thinking, this is the only thing I have to do. It's not a big production, not a big garment, just this. So voila, I've got my first strip here of one and a quarter inch, and I'm going to do the same thing with the, this side. And then also I still have the edge here that I just cut off. We can probably get a little bit out of this. It won't be nearly as long as this one because it was the outer part of the tie where it, you know, it starts curving out. So you're losing some width just because of the shape of the tie. But let's see what we can do. It's all going to get stitched together. Like all the strips that I cut will get stitched together in one continuous length in the end. And I can see about right here where it starts to get skinny. So I'm just going to cut that off. And same, I probably should be using my ruler for this, but I'm kind of playing fast and loose with this. Just trying to have fun, see what I can make out of these old ties. And now we can move on to the other half. And for this one, I'm going to flip it around. So I have my cut edge on my left. Okay, and this is my other long strip here. Put that with the others. And with what's left, let's see what we can do. You can see there is nothing hardly there. It's a half inch, a quarter inch. But here at like the fatter end of the tie, we might be able to get a small length out of that. I'm going to cut the skinny end off to make this piece easier to work with. So what I am left with are 
two pretty long strips. These are longer than a yard each, so that's a decent amount. Maybe a yard and a half each, something like that. And then two smaller strips. One of them is much shorter than the other. So the next step is to pin these together and we're going to get them stitched together. So the way that you do that, I'm going to take one of my long strips and with right side up and then what I'm using a long strip and a short strip, although I don't think it matters so much. But you put them the ends together. I'll bring you in a little bit closer so you can see this. With right sides face facing, I have my ends together. One just laid right over the top like that. And we are going to stitch these diagonal right there like that. So we are here at my machine and you can see how these get stitched together. So I've got my ends pinned together. So we are just going to stitch a diagonal line right across the ends there. So I took the pins out and then what we've got now, you open it up and it'll need to be pressed of course but you'll have a nice join there. And I did find, of course, that it was hard to back tack at the ends of these just for a secure seam. Um, I know that once this gets stitched into the garment, you know, it'll get stitched long ways, so it'll secure that down. And since it'll be folded up and put into my, my drawer, my sewing supply bin, until I use it, it, it's not likely to come apart, although back tacking at the ends is best. The machine was trying to eat up the fabric. So I've got you back over here at the cutting table. And since I don't need my mat anymore, it's going to kind of brush all the crumbs off. And But I do need my ironing mat. I'm just going to lay that back out. So I'm just going to lay my strip out here on my cutting mat and give it a good press where the seam was made. My iron, of course, uh, went into standby so it's not that hot. So while that's heating up, what I'm going to go ahead and do next is to get my next little seam pinned. So that'll be ready to go. And of course, it's hard to pin the fabric together on the cutting mat. <laughs> the pins just go right into the mat. And if you can see here where there's like a little tail, that's where I didn't, on this strip here, I did not cut that off. I didn't cut that off straight. It doesn't matter what, it'll get cut off. I can cut it off now or once I make this seam and unfold it and press everything down, I can clean it up then. It's not going to, you know, hinder anything. It's just a little extra piece sticking off, so no big deal. And my iron's ready now, so I'm going to go ahead and iron the seam that I just made. I press to one side when I'm making binding. Um, I don't know if there's like a best practice, like press to one side or press open. I just press it to one side. I feel like um, maybe it's more secure than pressing it open, but I could be wrong about that. Like with everything, you know, there's more than one way to do it. Now I'm just cleaning it up, cutting off that little triangle part that was left and the threads. And I'm seeing too, now that I'm working with these strips, that there are little places where I kind of messed up and it's not perfectly straight. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. What it may mean though is that I don't have a, a, an inch and a quarter all the way the length of the binding and it'll end up being more of an inch. When you go to use this, that'll all kind of fall out in the wash though, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this next seam together and then I will have one more piece, one more long piece, and then we'll be done. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my last piece on. It's already been pressed and trimmed, so now I have one continuous length of bias binding. 
let's measure it and see uh, what we're looking at. So my cutting mat here goes to 24 inches. That'll work. This is just going to be rough. One, two, three, four, five, six, two feet lengths. So that is what, 12 feet? That's four yards. Did I do the math right? I have to pause and think about this. Two feet times six is 12 feet divided by three, four yards. Yeah, that's pretty decent. That's enough to use in a garment. I mean, you know, your a top or something like that. And there you have it. If you've made bias binding before, thank you so much for sticking with my very long-winded explanation. Since I have done this a few times, this was my first time using a necktie. Um, it really does go pretty fast. Once you do it a few times, you can just get those strips cut. As long as you have, you know, your proper tools, your cutting mat, your ruler, your rotary cutter. Um, it'll go by really fast and then you'll have bias binding, homemade bias binding before you know it. I hope that you found this interesting. And as I mentioned during the process, I found another website called The Sewing Loft. I'll link her channel below or her website below. Um, but what I would like to do is share with you some ideas I got from there. Uh, of other things that you can use old neckties for rather than them just going, you know, into the trash. There's all kinds of ways you can repurpose neckties. I had no idea. And some of these are so cool. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, let's take a look. I'm going to bring you over to my computer and share my screen and we'll take a look at those. Let's do it. So we're on the website of Heather Valentine and it's called The Sewing Loft with Heather Valentine. And the title of this post is 13 Creative Ways to Reuse Men's Ties. And I came across this when I was just looking on how to make bias binding from a necktie and found all these suggestions on her blog. Of course, I'll link it below, but look at this dress. Isn't that, that is so cool. I could see wearing that to a Renaissance fest or something, but let's, let's jump down and look at each one of these. So the first one is you could just make it into a bow tie. That's so cute. And we've got a purse, also very cool. And the fun part to me about making something like this purse is choosing the ties that coordinate together nicely. And then we have a memories tie quilt. Oh, that's nice. I kind of feel like I should have done something like that with my husband's old ties. Not that those are memories he wants to have or anything, but could have been fun. Here's a clutch. And I'm guessing that if you click on these links, I'm not sure if these are links or not, but that it might take you to the instructional, maybe. It's not allowing me to, clink, to click, but I don't know if that's because I'm recording my screen. I'll check that out as soon as I'm done. Um, this, you could just make quilt blocks with it. I could see these, I could see doing a crazy quilt using men's ties or just neckties, I guess. A cozy kofi, a coffee cozy, cute. A tie necklace, also very cute. I'm wondering how they got these bubbles in here, probably with some sort of a um, I don't know, a styrofoam ball. I'm not sure. I hope I can, you know, I hope that these um, titles lead you to links with instructions. Oh, this is cool. A lampshade. I could see my mother doing something like this. She loves to get creative with lampshades. And a headband. Love that. Love that with the buckle there. A skirt. Cute. And look at this. This is a ruffle necktie tee. Oh, love it, love it. The creativity that people have never ceases to amaze me. And this one, a steampunk corset dress. I love this. I don't know that I would feel comfortable wearing this, but I do love it so much. An ottoman. 
And I guess that's it. That's 13. Weren't those projects fantastic? Oh, the creativity. It just blows my mind. Like all the thinking outside of the box. It's so cool. I would love to know if you guys have ever done anything with an old necktie, repurposed it in any way. What'd you use it for? And also, have you ever made your own bias binding? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to um, chat with you guys about that. That's about all I have today. I hope you found this helpful or interesting. As always, the links will be below. And if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. And I'll be very happy to help however I can. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. And I will see you soon. Next, in the coming week, I'll be back hopefully with an update on one of my projects. I kind of, um, I needed to do something um, small, like a quick win. That was a tip from one of you guys too, on how you get your, your sojo back. So that's kind of what this little necktie project was for me. It was so simple, easy. Now I have bias binding ready to go in a fun little pattern uh, to help kickstart my creativity and get me jazzed again. Let me know what you're working on. Thanks again, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.